recording. I just talked for probably five minutes and it wasn't recording, but this is Juanita and I'm Juanita and this is the Willie Bean Podcast and uh, I am recording from a new device, so I don't use like a fancy camera. I use my phone because it's what I have and it's giving me some problems. It's a new, I mean, it's new, it's nice, I love it, but it's, I don't know. Anyways, so I might have some issues. The focus might be a little weird today and it just cut out on me, but I don't know if it, what, why I did that. So we'll see. We'll just go with it. Um, I was talking about bags, but we put that down for a second. Um, let's see. So this is the Wooly Bean podcast. Just said that. You can find me mostly on Instagram. Um, that's where I'm the most active under my Instagram name is Wooly Bean. Um, and then I am on Ravelry, which I'm pretty good about putting, posting like all my projects, I stay on there. But I, I don't go on the I don't go on the forums or use any of that stuff. I use it to find patterns and then to keep track of my my favorite stuff, my favorite patterns, and keep track of my progress on my my stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm on there as JJ Set. and then oh, that's what I was saying. I do have in uh, a, a a shop a store and. It, Currently, I'm on Etsy because it works out better for just showing up now and then and post, putting stuff up. Um, and I sell bags, knitting bags. So I think most people that follow me on here know that already, but um, these are some of them. I've got like, almost ready to go in the next update. I just need a little bit of finishing. And they are, these are like the, the medium or I don't know if you call it a medium, but it's like a, I put my, like if I'm knitting something like socks, I put them in here, or these are great for your purse, and it's got the logo inside, and then of course I do the large project bags, and, and the babies, the little babies, which these are super sweet, so, that's me, I have that, and it's Wooly Bean, also on Etsy, so, um, I had to re-record this a couple times and now I'm forgetting what it was I said on here or like what I said on other ones. I don't know. I'm very awkward, to, uncomfortable today. I'm distracted. I'm waiting for a kid to like bust through the door. My husband's watching the girls upstairs and then um, they're like repaving our road, which is super quiet right now, so I'm glad, but it was a little louder earlier. Anyways, and I, I don't know if I'm getting allergies or I have allergies or I'm getting a cold, but I've been like struggling a little bit with my throat, so if that sounds froggy, that's why. Um, but yeah, I've got stuff to share. I finished my hollow shawl, and I've got some sewing that I did and for myself, and then one thing for my daughter, and I've got two cast-ons that one I'm like pretty good progress on for my daughter, and then another for myself. And I have other, like I have so many works in progress. Like I know for some people they can't do that, but I don't like that I do that, I just, I do it. I do it. So, um, I'm not going to show you any of the stuff though that I haven't been working on for a little bit. So, let's get into it, I think, because there's nothing else to talk about besides that. So, I'm going to jump into knitting FOs. And only one is my hollow shawl. Um, the pattern is by um, Melody Hoffman of Be Mandarins. And you know, you can find her on Instagram, on Ravelry, and uh, I like, a, I think I like most everything that she makes, like her, I mean, her and Andrea Mowry, and yeah, I think they might, I just have a ton of their patterns. Um, <laughs> okay, so wait, do you do this? I have just, I've put myself on a ban now. I am not allowed. I just started this because I just did this already, but I'm not allowed to buy new patterns um, unless I am about about to cast on. Like I'm ordering the yarn and I know, because some things I buy the pattern and I know I'm going to knit it, but then I don't knit it for like a year or more. And I counted. I used to be really bad at this. Like I do it way worse. Um, I'm not really sure why. I know now why. It's like the pattern comes out and the designer usually has like a sale you know like this is a new pattern and I'm always really excited because I've been watching them like get sneak peeks and everyone 
you know, then the test knits show their stuff and I'm like, oh, I want that. And then I even like in my mind, know the colors I want to knit it with and it hurts. And so I buy the pattern because it's on sale and then I, okay, I just had like a panic. I was like, am I recording? Is it even recording? It is, <laughs> but I get it. And then I, I don't have the money to buy the yarn that I want yet or something. I'm like knitting a million other things and can't cast on. And so it sits there and I don't, I don't knit it. And so I was counting in my, and I, before I used to do this way worse, like, I don't know. I just was like, oh, I like this and I'll knit this sometime. Um, but I counted and I had like 30 patterns in my library that I've never knit. And I mean, they're there, which is nice. I have them. So when I go to knit them, they're there, but then I know that there's going to be new ones coming out or other things that I discover. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this because there's, I have like almost 300 favorites in my, um, favorites on Ravelry. And I doubt that I will obviously ever knit all of those things, but I even went through and like culled a bunch or, you know, you save early on in your knitting and then later you're like, yeah, no, that's not nice. That's not a cute thing. <laughs> and anyway, so I put myself on like a pattern diet. I don't know. Or I've just given myself that rule that unless I am going to, because the pattern's not going anywhere. And even if, I mean, realistically, what am I saving? Like a couple dollars, but then I'm r running the risk of the fact that I probably won't be knitting that thing for a while. So unless I'm about to cast on in the next few weeks on it, that I'm not going to buy that pattern. I say that and I know that I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to stick to it. But that's what I really don't want to because I just feel so bad because I was looking through it and then I was like, I don't know if you do this, but I do the math. And I was like 30 patterns and then like average, like say it's like, you know, five bucks each. I was like, ah, oh, like I could buy yarn with that. And the patterns, I mean, the patterns are great and most of them I would like to knit. But at the same time, it's like, they're just sitting there and nothing. And I'm glad I'm supporting those designers. But right now I would love, you know, that a hundred and that pot like potential $150 for yarn. Anyways, that's my new rule. Besides the point, hollows. So my point was I bought this, why made me think that? I bought this pattern forever ago um, and have wanted to knit it. And I'm really glad that I got to. It was super enjoyable. The yarn is um, Capretta by Knit Picks. And it is not, I don't think this colorway is um, available anymore because I want to say they like, changed it up, which I, I get that they do, but I kind of don't like that they do because I don't know. I like some of the new colors though. Anyways, um, this was like called Dolphin or something, but it's, I don't think it shows on the screen, but it's kind of like a warm gray, a warm, soft gray. And this is my first shawl of this um, style, like this shape. And I really like it because it is so, I'm not sure if the picket edge is supposed to go up or down, but what I wanted it for was when I'm wearing something um, like where my shoulders are out, I get really cold in the air conditioning sometimes, depending on if I'm wrangling children. But it's just like, I mean, it keeps all of you warm. So just even doing this, it's like having a really small little blanket that you can just cuddle up in. And then of course, like wearing it later. Um, I, said, I mean, I get if your hair is up. I always think it's funny when the, the podcasters, like they don't want to mess their hair up on the screen. And so they don't want to try something on or others just like, whatever. Anyways. I don't like to wear my hair down when I have a shawl. I feel like there's just a lot going on then because I do have big hair. Well, this is not going on. Hold on. <laughs> Anyways, essentially, like it's going to feel, it's so, this is um a cashmere merino blend. So um, I had a few comments from different um, knitters about liking that I knit with budget friendly yarn knit picks and I thought that was super nice first of all for them to mention I didn't even think about it I just do it because it's what I can afford um, but I think especially if you're starting out 
like the indie yarns it could be something like you're super drawn to right away but I've I think you know because the more you knit the more practice you get at anything you're gonna get better your skills gonna improve and I couldn't have knit as much as I have been able to knit like the number of projects many in the beginning completely awful but I would not have been able to knit them you know with more expensive yarn so um and I feel like knit picks I mean like this is cashmere merino and I got it on a sale so I wait always they have their monthly sales and they'll feature like all of one kind of yarn 20% off so like right now it's all their alpaca um which I wish I wish I could get because I want to try the I think it's Andy and hold on I reach for this came in the mail today my catalog but look thanks mailman I know, mailman probably didn't do that himself, obviously, but still, I was just like, oh, what if I had wanted something on that one page? That's okay. Um, oh, they have this new one, Twill, that I'm going to try. It's a, I think it's worsted, but it's 100% superwash merino wool, yeah. And it's like $13 a hank, but it just, you can tell, I think, by like the twist in it, it's going to have like good stitch definition. So I haven't tried that one yet though. Um, they go is another one that I wanted to try. This has nothing to do with my finished project. I don't know why I'm going off on this, but here we go. It's a bulky and it's superwash merino and nylon, $10 a hank for 110 yards. So I was like, I mean the colors, there's some like muted ones, but I don't, I would not knit with bright. I might knit a red, but no and no but just for me because obviously I knit <laughs> right now I'm knitting everything gray and I don't like when I look at my feed I get really excited when I'm knitting something like with a mustard or oh, I can hear the truck outside anyways um but I want to knit the Ursa I'm having a really hard time with pattern names today I was trying to remember anyways um I thought of this because I think I think that one's bulky Anyways, um, oh, all right. I can't remember what, oh, the Andean treasure. Oh, here it is. It's a sport and then baby alpaca. And normally it's seven sixty nine um, for 50 gram ball or 110 yards. But right now that's 20% off. So I really want, and there's like such sweet, I mean, look at the colors, like super soft and muted. So like this pink, it's kind of like a lilac -y pink. I would knit with for my pink loving daughter. And then I always get drawn to like, I gotta get more. I mean, I feel like I want more colors because all my, I don't know, I'm going off. Anyways, I like Nympics. So you will see me with a lot of stuff today. We're going super budget friendly on another yarn. So I'll share more with you that way, with that later. But anyway, so the hollows, um, it was super nice. The pattern was easily memorized, memorizable, Memor easy to memorize um, because the sections like are the same. You just knit longer pieces and then her instructions were clear I don't I don't think there was ever a point where I was confused about anything um, and it is so like lightweight because um, even though it's fingering you knit I want to say this was on sixes and I used the um, tufted woolens 57th and 5th or something like that I don't remember what the name of it is but it smells so nice um, so it's been blocked. I blocked it twice thanks to my daughter who came down and messed with it in between and it, yeah, I loved it. It was a great like easy to knit with, like easy to pick up in between. Um, oh, I got something pink on it. That's not cool. Right there, but you can't see it. <laughs> Anyways, um, easy to pick up and like knit while watching TV because a lot of it, I mean, you're just doing, and you could tell, I mean, you could just, you know, stocking it and then like one gutter stitch and I don't know, it was wonderful. I was sad. I was super happy to be done with it because I wanted, wanted to use it and it's like really good. Well, right now the weather's like 90 degrees, so not good weather for that, but I take it with me and then, you know, I go inside somewhere. The air conditioning is freezing. It feels like everywhere. And very soon, I feel like we'll have the fall weather like everyone else, but you feel it in the air. The tre trees are losing leaves slowly, and 
it's coming cooler mornings but like look it's like it's just so easy to take and so soft so love 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 um that's my only knitting fo <laughs> so i will share my sewing fo's next i should have picked them up before i started the camera um so let it focus i should have like i know again i'm comparing to other podcasters but they always like will wear their stuff and i thought about it but i don't know i just didn't I like to wear this shirt. This is my one. Um, I like to wear it with jeans. <laughs> and I haven't really quite found like how I want to wear it with, I don't know. It was, I just didn't want to wear it. So, but I do like it. This is the shirt number one. And I knit it with, I'm trying to remember. I, I want to say the, the, the fabric is Balboa and it's a linen cotton blend can't remember the designer um but if I remember it when I edit I'll put it on here um but I bought it specifically for sewing a garment with and then I do have leftovers that I like was like well I'll make more bags with um and it was super simple like this is definitely a beginner pattern and you know it's just two pieces <laughs> the front and the back and then you hem the sleeves and the bottom and then you do I didn't have enough fabric to make bias tape to do the bias tape neckline, so I just used some black. And that was my first time doing that, and it was very, very simple. And I'm excited for like the, that the more this gets worn and washed, the softer it'll get. Um, the only modification that I did end up doing, because I put it on, one, I feel like I based the neckline off of a shirt I was wearing. I do wish that I had not it does not go too low, but I feel like it goes too wide. And then um, I have like issues with my bra strap showing. So I just have to wear a specific bra that doesn't, you know, show usually and it's fine. But I mean, it's like right there. It's just like, it's barely on the edge of that. But it's nice and high. It's not, I don't like, I don't have any boobies, but I don't want them to, it to be low anyways. Um, but, I cut out, I put it back inside out. I tried it on and it was just too, because of the fabric, like if it was a drapier fabric, then it would have been fine to be exactly as the pattern was. But, and I knit the smallest size, um, but I had to go back and I just took it down and like took a pencil and carved in a little bit and drew a little bit more to take in on the sides. Cause it was just too much. And because the fabric is stiff, um, it just wasn't, wasn't what I wanted for that. So I just, I, I brought it in a little bit and it works really good. I've loved it. Like I like wearing it with high-waisted jeans. It is, it comes like at, I would consider it more of like a cropped. I don't think I modified that at all. It's just that length on me. And I do have a little bit longer of a torso. Like I'm a tiny, well, I'm a short person. Um. I feel like I'm average, but I guess I am, I don't know, probably average height. I don't know. I'm 5'3 three and 3 quarters, so almost 5'4. And I, like if my hair is good lift, then it probably 5'4. But the, what's my point? Oh, but I have an issue with like one piece swimsuits or certain tops where it's just like I don't, I have a, my stomach sticks out or I don't know. So, um, anyways, this comes like a little bit, like it, I like to wear it with high-waisted stuff and for, I think it'll look really pretty with like a black pencil skirt for wearing to like our meetings and stuff, but I, I don't have one. I don't know why, but I don't have a black pencil skirt right now. I had to like buy a whole new everything when I lost weight this year and it's been fun, but slow. So I, I don't know. Maybe I can make one. I want to say that's ambitious, but I think that's not, I mean, it's black and it's a pencil skirt, so it couldn't be too hard. Um, this is my second one. I just noticed when I pulled it out um, that my daughter's been ripping. So I'll first I'll say what it is. Um, yeah, this is a geranium dress and it's using the expansion pack. So the only thing on the expansion pack I want to say is just the sleeves. So. 
I just did the short sleeves, which I have little strings, I just noticed I got a trim, but short sleeves. And this fabric, um, my older sister had bought um, for me. Um, it's the Liberty London fabrics or something, I don't know. But she bought it, and then I have enough to make another dress for, I don't know. I don't know if I want, want my girls to like be super matching. I like it, but they don't. So anyways, um, so I use the cl classic like higher or shorter bo bo shorter bodice, um, and but I just added the sleeves. But I did cut, which I probably wouldn't do again on this one. Um, I've done it on drapier fabrics and I really like the look of it, but I cut the skirt um, with the fabric. So all the way across, not using like the shorter, I don't know if it makes sense, but I cut, you can look it up, width of fabric. Um, so the skirt is has a lot more gather to it, so it's a bigger, um, you know, you get a good twirl. And I just use for the girls just because, one, it's easier for them to like pop off, but I use the uh, cam snaps and on their back, but I just noticed she did this, like it's supposed to only come open to like right here and I just noticed she like ripped it down to there and it's it's one of those what's that called flat filed seam or I don't know but so it's nothing's like really sticking out but if her booty's gonna hang out if she if I don't figure out how to fix that now anyways I'm not sure how she did that or why but love it like one I love the fabric I think it's kind of like very sweet and no, it's just really pretty and it looks really good on her I love the length um, I was worried I think this is the four-year-old size so anyways I did that for her she's worn it a ton already and yeah that was that was that and that's my second one and then um, my estuary which this was kind of unexpected. So um, a friend gifted me the pattern and I had this fabric. So I wasn't even planning on making, like I bought, like all the fabric I bought for garments so far. Um, the only thing I've knit or sewn is my number shirt number one. I still have some rayon and then a bunch of yardage to make um, a hinterland dress and I made a gypsum, which I've since ripped out because I've got to make it size down again, but um, I just realized I'm like on my waist where I, I don't know, like it's pulling right here. I gotta fix, man, I'm glad I podcast today because I have like all these things I gotta fix. Anyways, I had bought this originally, the fabric, it is a Kaufman um, linen and I don't know if it's a bl linen blend or I probably because it doesn't feel like straight up linen but I had bought it so I had like probably three yards or something um, for bags because I used to do I don't know something with bags where I do this kind of gray on the bottom and I stopped <laughs> I don't know I just stopped doing it so I had all this yardage that was just sitting there and I pulled it out and I was like you know what and so I measured it out how much I had and I had two and a half left and the pattern said that I'd need two and a half. And I was like, doing it. Because I was so excited, again, like just like I am with knitting patterns, I'd seen the, you know, pictures of it and she kept showing it and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I love, like I made it, I think it's supposed to be anyways, but I made it so it fits high on my waist, like, or at my natural waistline now. And then just that, oh, like flowiness, like then no matter what size your booty is, like it just, covers it and then these big pockets are amazing. The only thing is I think, well, no one would notice this, but I think like gathers, I would have pulled them a little bit farther away here because it likes to like hide my button band sometimes for some reason, but I did the faux button placket so they don't unbutton, they're just sewn together. And because this is elastic enough to get on and off. And in my stories on my Instagram, I talk, I have like a saved storyline don't you call it but I have I talk about it on there um and and my shirt number one so if there's any details you missed on this you can go back there anytime and check but I don't know that I'll keep these buttons on I did them for the size and I don't mind the color 
um, but they are just little wooden unfinished buttons and when I wash it I'm just not sure how they're gonna hold up so we'll see but I gotta sew that little sucker there and then fix that dress but I love it like the fullness I knit I want to say the size two and then I had to go back and make the waistline a little bit tighter but I probably could have just knit the zero and then it it would have been would have been fine um, but the linen it works really well I am excited like it's not I don't know it's just super comfortable not stiff at all and I could have knit I keep saying knit. I could have sewn or I could see myself sewing another one um, and trying it in something that's a little bit drapey just because and it, I, I sewed it in a day and that was well I I, I have not yet had like patterns printed out so I've only ever done like where you print them at home and then sew them tape them together and so I like that was a buster like the night before um, <laughs> I was sitting on the floor watching shows with my or TV with my husband and he was like handing me tape and I was like lining it up and then things weren't quite turning out and I think that's like my least favorite part of sewing but um, I just always end up sewing last minute like that because we were, had something to go to um, our convention for the summer and I wanted a new skirt and I was like, oh, I'll just, yeah. And so like a couple days before, I just did that and it turned out good. So estuary by So Liberated, which I cannot remember her name right now, like her name name, so, but I'll put her information on here. Anyways, yay. And that's all my sewing. So I will jump into um, works in progress. Um, work in progress is the Maple Cardigan by Pam Allen, and it is from the Plain and Simple book, um, which I want to, like, I really want to, I think I've said this a bunch on Instagram, but I want to knit the willow. Like, that's just so pretty. But, and I've, <laughs> last year, I started the chest set and got, like, halfway done, and then found a mistake way early on, and then just decided, I was like, bah, like, I just rocked it. Oh. And so... Originally, this is funny, when I got the book, I looked at this one. This is one of the ones I was like, there was two patterns in here. There's 11. Um, beautiful book. Like, it's one of those ones I just like having because it's so pretty. But I, this is one of the ones I was like, meh, I'll probably never knit that one. But it's the first one. Well, second one I've cast on, but the, you know, I should get done. Anyways, <laughs> so it's this one, the maple. And let's see if I can find close-ups. Um... Sorry, I feel like something in my eye that's like bugging me. Um, but I wanted, again, I'm, I've been trying to think about like holes in my wardrobe where my knitting can fill that a space. And so I don't have um, a cardigan in this color or like in this kind of, I just felt like this as a cardigan to wear with skirts or dresses. And I had bought a lot of dresses this summer um, and I think this style will go really well and I'm gonna try to make it a tiny bit cropped compared to what the length is on in the picture. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm having a hard time. There it is. So like there's a little and it's super rusticy looking which I do. I think the yarn I'm using works well with that but the um, area around the collar you knit at the same time as this and this part's brioche and this part's stocking knit. And so they have you do some like, because the gauge is different, they have you do some stuff to like um, remedy that. And the only thing I didn't realize that I'm a little unsure about is because it's dark, the dark picture, um, that is kind of like a drop shoulder. And I'm not, I had, I, I pictured it, um, I don't know, like more of a structured shoulder. So I'm not, I'm not sure how that'll be, but it's fine. This, like, I didn't have a, uh, I bought this yarn, um, on a sale from Knit Picks, and, um, I'm, of course, in the middle of a row, and it's coming across way brighter on there, but it's not that bright. It's got, like, let's see, like a yellow or a gold and a brown, and 
it's like way brighter on the screen. Like maybe like maybe that's more accurate. I don't know. Um, it looks like a dark plum kind of in person. But here are like the brioche panels. And then you have the little, you know, garter or ribbed edge and then your stocking knit. And I'm only about that far, so. It's, I, I really like it. It's squishy here. I think it'll feel really nice and it'll be warm. This is knit with um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in Bouquet Heather. So, um, yeah, I don't like maybe over there you can see the, I don't know. I can't see, like the color looks really red on there. It's not, <laughs> um, but I've set it aside for a second because my daughter has like my three-year-old has like become obsessed with cardigans a friend visited a couple months ago and our house is always kept cold in the summertime um because of my husband he just always turns the thermostat down and then i turn it up it's like a battle so it's always cold when other people come over they just like know it and so especially a certain group of friends they always bring like a sweater or a cardigan or something and so her and her husband both had cardigans on, when, or they brought them when they came over. And um, ever since then, my daughter, it's like she's has become her new new accessory. And she's three, and I know it sounds silly, but she, cause she dresses, dresses herself, and she picked out her own, she picks out her own clothes every morning. She gets dressed right away. She changes her clothes like three times a day. Um, and, which is complete contrast to my other daughter who just like, she's still wearing her dress she had on yesterday today like from our meeting so she's got she slept in it and she woke up she's playing in it and then um like she wouldn't change unless we're going somewhere or i like tell her to whereas elsie has already she's on her like second outfit today and it's you know one or something i don't know what time it is two and anyway so she wanted a cardigan so this is what i was saying i was like i got some cheaper yarn <laughs> um I had nothing in my stash that would work for her. She's super, which I think most kids are. Like she didn't want to wear anything kind of more rustic and I didn't have enough. And I don't know, step out. I didn't want to like use my super nice yarns on her. Like the, the limited amount of very soft, whatever yarns I have. Like I have plants for it. It's for selfish knitting. And I wanted, so we went to Hobby Lobby and this is the first acrylic yarn that I have bought. I think since I used to knit um, baby hats for like work, like a small little Etsy shop business. And it never went anywhere. It was kind of awful, but I uh, used like a merino acrylic blend, but I had something because like, I think, well, for me, I, I knit something and I gift it or if I do sell it, most people, I feel like they don't know, especially for kid wear, they don't know how to take care of it. And you do want something that's gonna be easily to be washed. And so, anyways, that worked then for that. And so, I didn't have anything to buy her. I really wanted to buy her something. She loves pink, and I've always hated pink until her. But I, what I love is like the avocado pinks or like the mauves or that dusty rose color. And I think they're so pretty. Um, and she likes she likes any pink so I was hoping to find something like that but of course we couldn't I found colors I did like and some yarns like there was like these really pretty gold and there was some um, I think one in some I don't know what kind of yarn it was but it was like called tobacco and I was like ooh like let's make something with this and she's like ew brown mom ew so we went with this just white and it I don't even know um But it was just, it's DK weight um, acrylic. And it said, it was like super, like something soft DK, low pill or no pill, I can't remember. And then, um, you know, I was just thinking washable. She's gonna wear it, like right, you know, she wears it outside playing. She wears it all the time, constantly. So this works. And I bought a couple different colors, and I really like the colors. Like, part of me, I was like, man, I wish this wasn't acrylic, because I'm tempted to knit something for myself out of one of them, but 
I don't know. Like, I don't know how it breathes or feels. But, um... Because acrylic isn't wool, and you get spoiled with wool. Um, anyway, so all I have left is the sleeves, which I'm going to start on this one, and then just the button bands. But it's the Anchor Cardigan um, by Petite Knit. And I want to say that this isn't, isn't quite as long. I'm knitting the 4-5 size, I believe. And, or 3-4. Something like that. 3-4 or 4-5. Um, and this isn't as long as it calls for in the pattern. I knit it a little shorter because I know she's going to probably wear her dresses. And she's crazy girly, so she wears dresses all the time. And not that that's crazy. You know what I mean. She's just, she is super girly. Um, so, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so I just have the button bands to cast on and then the, the sleeve. But I really like it and it knit. Oh, sorry. Focus. It knit super fast, um, and the pattern I really liked. Like, it was super easy to follow. You do, like, the little raglan um, stitches, and I liked it. And it's soft. She'll like it, so I'm happy. And I only ended up using, I bought a bunch of these because I wasn't, well, I bought two for each sweater. Because so I've got, if I knit one for one daughter, I'm going to knit one for the other, and then um, I couldn't decide. I got, like, a dark berry wine color and then like a heathered gray of course and then the white and so I got two skeins of each and so I think I'll knit it in one like I still have this whole thing so I'm gonna have extra acrylic yarn yay <laughs> anyways um but it was like five bucks so I'll have a sweater essentially for five bucks not counting pattern pattern cost. But this is when I bought a pattern again a little while ago and then I'm finally getting to use it so that made me happy. But the anchor. Anchor cardigan. Um, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure. So that one will, I'm going to finish that one up and then I'm going to finish. I don't think I'm going to work on this one just yet because I'm like feeling really bad about my Tecumseh. Like I started on it last year. It's like half I don't know, maybe halfway done, and then it's just sitting there in all its beautiful smooshiness, and so I think I'm going to pick that back up, and we're not close to sweater weather yet, but I want to make sure that it is absolutely done. Like, I'm more excited about wearing that than my maple right now, so I'm going to pick that back up and knit that, and then I have got to finish some socks. Like, I still, I only have like one done of two different patterns. So I've got to do that, but it's just been busy. We started, um, I home, my oldest boy is in, well, let me stop this section. Well, I'll just, whatever. <laughs> my oldest boy is um, in first grade and then my girls, I'm preschooling together. The middle one wasn't quite at the age for kindergarten. Like she turns five next month. Um, and so we homeschool and Last year was kindergarten. I, I, I was like determined to homeschool and it was so rough because like my anxiety was super bad and it was like coming and going because I was trying different, like I was heavy trying meds last year and we're trying to find like an antidepressant that worked and taking um, anxiety meds to, you know, cut the anxiety until the antidepressants worked. And so I have like these moments where I mean, I wasn't having anxiety, but I was like just drugged out. And I said, not probably not as bad as it sounds, but for what I had no creativity in me, I had no like motivation, like not my normal. Like I would just wake up and through the day and go through the motions. And thankfully, like looking back at pictures, like we did lots of stuff. My kids have no memory of it. Like they're thankful. I am thankful for that with kids. Like I was talking to my son about. Remember how mommy was anxious, and he was like, no. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, but this year already, like we are two weeks in and it is such a difference. I found um, the curriculum that we've like, I, pulling language arts and I'm going to do the math through is um, the good and the beautiful and love, love it so far. Like again, just two weeks in, but loving it. And then um, the girls, 
I can't remember. It's like some little reading set I like ordered online, and it has them like for preschoolers start with the sounds for the alphabet, and you sing songs, and they color pictures, and you tell them a story with the letter, and they love it. And then I set it up so we do school in the same room. So like, this is my craft side, and like I'm looking straight across, and that's our um, school room right there. So. I can't come down here and craft like they're not quite to the age where I can do that one day perhaps but they we come down right after breakfast and sit down and I get the girl started on some little like project there and I can do stuff with him and so he's not one because like last year they he'd see them playing and he wanted to play or I had to like he ended up doing like mostly computer work and it was so repetitive he got really bored with it so anyways it has been way nicer um and my anxiety I, I'm still not who I was before my anxiety like I'd, I'll say before kids because I feel like there was like probably a general health decline after I started having kids um, so I'm not back to that because I still have moments where but again I don't think I ever will be and I say that because always when you go through something you, you learn from it and you hopefully and you um, I don't know. I am a lot more aware of how I'm feeling, what I eat, how it makes me feel. So I'm very sensitive to sugar. Um, I can have zero caffeine, even in green tea. And um, I avoid like 95% of inflammatory foods. So I'm off of dairy and I'm off of gluten and I'm off of um I can't have corn at all like gluten I sometimes will have flour tortillas if there's like no other option for something um like if we're eating out and I don't know and um because the only thing gluten it just makes me tired gluten makes me tired dairy hurts my stomach the next day and but corn really messes my up my digestive system I've noticed and rice I can't have anything rice and then because I can't have dairy, I was having like almond milk, and then I just discovered that I, I think it's an almond, I don't know if it's a, sen just, I'll say sensitivity, but um, it makes my throat swell. Like not, it gives me a lump in my throat. It's not swell like in I can't breathe, I can breathe fine. It just gives me that feeling, um, which I was re registering as anxiety for a long time. I was like, man, it's like I feel anxious today because I have this lump in my throat, and then it wasn't. It was, I stopped eating almonds, uh, and the lump one way, so anyways. Um, but it's been fun. Like, I'm excited for the school year, and I'm cautiously optimistic about winter because I get nervous about, always, I get a little, um, my de depression comes on a little bit for winter when we get, like, we don't have winters as bad as some areas. Um, but ever since I had to stay home, or ever since we had kids, I you know I stay home with them, and I feel like our days we do it feels like we are really shut in, and the days can be really repetitive, and so I love getting outside in the sunshine. Anyways, I don't know. I'm rambling. I think I'm done with what I have to say for the podcast. So thank you so much for watching, and um. I am excited to, I've got some like ideas of some stuff in the works, so I'm not going to say too much about that, but just keep your ears open or whatever. And yeah, um, that's it. So find me on Instagram at Wooly Bean and check out my Ravelry page, JJD Set, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.
whatever those things are outside. Can you hear them right now? Do I know where to look? A camera. Uh.